This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. Today, I want to talk you through why I believe creativity matters and is really important for your business, your project, whatever it is you're doing to stand out from the crowd. Now, when I'm talking about creativity, it might be something about designing a course. It might be the graphics that you have for your business, but it also equally might be something behind the scenes that you don't often take the time to do. This could be painting, this could be crafting, this could be writing for pleasure. And I think the more that we open ourselves up to our own creativity, the more we are following our joy, the more we are following our passions, whatever they are, however unique, however diverse, the more we are going to share ourselves and find that expression of joy. Now, this is really important because it's when you're when you're running a business and particularly if you are like me a coach or someone building a personal brand and you're putting yourself out there well sometimes it can be quite two dimensional and people are just seeing a limited facet of you and i want to remind you that whatever you're focusing on right now that is not all you are that is not all that you are capable of doing what you love can help light you up absolutely And the more you take time to allow yourself, one, to unwind from your business, from your big goals and your big visions, the more you allow yourself that rest time, the more energy you're going to have to come back to your focus and your business and your energy. The other thing is that creativity, by accessing different parts of your brain, by accessing different parts of who you are, There are all sorts of synapses and and internal responses that are going to happen in your brain that can actually help you have more creativity and trust your instincts and your impulses within your business. So the more you follow those creative impulses, whatever they are, wherever that you find them, the more you are expressing who you are for yourself. Now, I talk a lot about getting visible. And part of that is about knowing who you are and what you stand for and what you love and what brings you joy. And if you aren't tapping into those things that bring you joy, you are quashing parts of you. And I think in in a space where we are building personal brands, it's very easy to get lost in the rhythm and the rush of doing that. But you know you are way more than that. I believe that as human beings, we have huge potential for creativity. In fact, we are creating all the time. The level of success that I've created over the last year is because I created that in my mind first. If something is possible in your mind and then you take the steps to create it, you are making manifest what is in your head. Now, some of you out there listening might be really into law of attraction. Some of you might be into subconscious work. For some of you, this might be completely left field and you're not very comfortable with it. But the more rest time you take for yourself and your mind in terms of building your business, the better results you're going to get. There's another thing to this. So when you are taking time to be creative and expressing who you are to yourself and you're seeing different facets of yourself it opens you up to some spontaneity in your in your work it opens you up also to sharing more of yourself on social media and in podcasts now particularly in podcasts and in and on social media posts we know as marketeers that people are drawn to the things that are less than perfect about ourselves, to the quirky things we do, to the interesting elements and angles of our life. And if you allow yourself to express those things, that what you got up to at the weekend, what you did when you turned off the TV, what you've been thinking about, what you've been dreaming about, and that you're not just this one-dimensional, two-dimensional creature, you are a living, breathing soul with expression who is capable and willing to share the other parts of you. And we know that this is actually what draws people towards us. 
And it's one of the reasons why I really love podcasting, because I don't just have to show you one angle of me. I don't just have to show you professional Anna. I get to show you the deeper sides of me. I get to show you the excited parts, the sad parts, the reflective parts. So the more creative you are and the more time you take to do the things that you love, not because you have to be perfect at them. And in fact, I'm going to say that again, not because you have to be perfect at them, but because creativity allows you and gives you permission to fail a little bit, to be imperfect and to learn and revise. These are important mindset skills to develop for business. The more you follow your creativity for joy and passion, and you don't have to be perfect, and I'll give you an example of this in a moment, the more you are going to be able to pick yourself up when things don't go right in entrepreneurship. It's fact. The more you can cope with getting things wrong and realizing that even the wrong things on the paper, the wrong things that you've put out there are part of a learning ground, you're going to expand your ability as a business owner. So for example, in terms of creativity, if you're an artist, you don't sit down and know that every piece of work you start is going to be perfect. You allow yourself to explore. You allow yourself to revise. You allow yourself to get that pencil on the paper and begin the sketch. And I want you to think about what am I holding back from? What elements of me have I been holding back from? Because I'm scared that I'm going to get it wrong. Because I believe that when we really tap into our creativity, we can unleash parts of ourselves that we've kept hidden. And this is something that I talk about again and again in my book, Get Visible. Now, I'm a huge fan of the work by Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way about 30, 35 years ago now, I believe. Now, her book, it was originally written for what she terms trapped artists, people who, for whatever reason, are not following their creativity. And I'm a huge believer that when we unlock those parts of ourselves, all sorts of elements of our world expand because we see that it's okay to play. It's okay to be imperfect. It's okay to do something for the joy of it. So I would like you to just have a think. If you allowed yourself to potentially return to something you did as a child just because it's fun, what difference would that make to your life and what joy would that bring to your business? So for example, I was listening to a book over the weekend and I was listening to Rebecca Campbell's Light is the New Black. And she was describing a woman who at the age of 44 had gone back to do ice skating lessons, figure skating lessons, because this was something she'd done in her childhood. And that was where she found joy. And that's where she felt abandon and release. And so she'd gone back to have those classes. And now she'd given up when she hit those teenage years, when suddenly boys were on the horizon and people were starting to go out drinking. And so she'd given up her sense of self and her sense of freedom and expression. And returning to that at age in her mid 40s, part of her found that really challenging because she had those fear factors. She had those things about, well, what what if I'm judged? What if I'm not good enough? What if I fall over? What if I look like an idiot because everyone else on the ice is under 12? What if? What if she goes and has a great time? What if she goes and loves it? What if she goes and expresses herself? What if she goes and allows herself to be rubbish? Because she isn't going to, at age 44, going to start off from where she left off at age 16. But in doing so, she's able to find her passion and her joy, which makes her life so much better, which means as a coach or as a whatever you're doing in your social media, you've got so much more to share. Now, one of the things for me in terms of creativity was that I used to believe that I could never be a writer because I was criticized in my early childhood for my writing ability. And that massively impacted how my sense of self and what I thought I was capable of and how much I was holding myself back. Now, it wasn't true. So what are the stories you're telling yourself about why you can't do the thing that is creative? So to give you a bit of an insight into what's going on for me, I know that as I've gone fully into this entrepreneurship and coaching world and knowing I want to have more impact, 
I know that I had left behind parts of me that are incredibly creative. I come from a, a theatre background, a stage background, a screen background, and I hadn't been pursuing that of late because I was so focused on what I'm doing. Now, as I record this, tomorrow is my birthday. And the thing that I'm doing for my entire birthday is spending time researching, reading, and then brain dumping everything I want to to get down on paper about a massive creative project because I'm going to allow myself to be imperfect so that I can learn and develop. So when I come back to my business, I'm going to be so much fresher. I'm going to be so much more focused. And I don't feel that my business is everything about me. I don't feel that I'm my business or I'm my family and that's it. Instead, I'm this multifaceted person who can who can achieve anything in any direction should I choose to. So what I want you to think about from, from this podcast episode today is I want you to think, what are you not allowing yourself to do? And what difference would it make to you if you started to do that? We know that content is more appealing when we see a part of someone. We know that we are drawn to podcasts when people reveal something of themselves. But sometimes you have to reveal it to yourself first. So stop and think, what are you sitting on? And podcasts are so powerful, so powerful for that no like, and trust factor. And I want to just let you know a little bit about my podcast mastermind. The podcast mastermind I am taking applications for at the moment. And if you'd like to know more, you need to go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash mastermind. And this is going to be for premium level podcasters, whether you are just starting or you've already got a show. This is about people seriously wanting to become one of the podcasting elite and take it to the next level. So that for me is about having impact, influence, knowing and understanding what goes on behind the scenes in a podcast to really make it work, to really be a powerful front end for your business. So you can offer so much more transformation for people. We've also got something very exciting happening for anyone who comes on in January. We are hoping to be able to offer that you will be, have the chance to become a co-author in a decent quality podcasting book. And um, The book will not just be about podcasting, it'll be about business, business opportunities. And if you would like to find out a bit more about this, then message me, send me a DM or an email or go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash mastermind to find out many more details about how you can become one of the podcasting elite. So that's it from me today. Take care. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneurs Get Visible. To get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community, go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible.